surprisingly, this integral was not beamed down to us from some super advanced alien civilization. Instead, it was conjured at MIT and used as the final problem in the annual MIT Integration B circa 2015. Before I give away the solution, pause the video and see if you can solve this insane integral. The most menacing aspect of this integral is the infinite product. Let's take a closer look. If we evaluate the cosine expression using the indices given in the product, we'll end up with an infinite product that would look like this. That unfortunately isn't going to get us very far. We need to employ a trig identity to crack it. Let's try the double angle formula for sine. We'll make the following substitution for theta and plug that into sine 2 theta to get the following. And now that simplifies a tiny bit to get us this. But now we can reapply the same trig identity on sine x over 2. When we do, we get this. Now we'll plug this new expression back into sine x over 2. And this is what we get. Let's do it again. We'll take sine x over 4 and rewrite it as the following. That expression will get fed back into sine x over 4 just like before. And now we have the following expansion. Now we'll move the cosine terms in our sine x expression so that the denominators of their arguments are increasing. And now we look at how they're starting to match up with our infinite product on top. Let's fast forward and repeat this process n times. When we do, we arrive at the following more general expression for sine x. This expression is going to need a little more work. Let's multiply by x over x and also move 2 to the n to a new home. Doing this has not changed the value of our sine x expression one bit, but it has set us up for a clever trick. Do you see how we slid the x directly above 2 to the n? That subtle maneuver has now given us a clear path to follow. This expression is now nothing more than a juiced up version of a familiar limit we learn in calculus. The limit of sine x over x as x approaches infinity is 1. That holds true for our expression as well. And now that 1 can replace the boxed expression. One more thing. Let's divide both sides by x. And this is the linchpin to solving our integral. Since the infinite cosine products in both expressions are equal, we can conclude that sine x over x is indeed equal to the infinite cosine product. This nifty little identity, by the way, was discovered by none other than the great Leonard Euler. Let's return to the original problem. And now, let's replace the infinite cosine product with sine x over x. The x's cancel, leaving us with this. The antiderivative of sine x is negative cosine x, and evaluating from 0 to pi over 4, we get the following, which simplifies to negative square root of 2 over 2 plus 1. We did it! Now the question remains, did someone really solve this integral under the pressure of a packed audience of MIT students and faculty during the actual integration bay? Did man defeat the integral, or was it the other way around? Well, to find the answer to that, you're in for a real treat. Just click the link in the description below and go to the timestamp I provided. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Also, I'd love to get your feedback in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you soon.